BTSN Justin Hunt. We're here, June Team 2023, Lemert Park. I'm speaking with the legendary Pep Love. How are you doing, sir? Good. How are you, Justin? Active and awesome. Looking at all the beautiful people walking around, all the culture spilling lovely into the atmosphere. What brought you down to Lemert Park today? Uh, you know, just like everybody else, to come uh, enjoy the festivities and, um, you know, to celebrate black culture and our experience here from these last few centuries to now and what we uh, think might be the day that we were liberated from shadow slavery here. So we just call it Juneteenth. I feel like it's a story that people are still getting hip to. What does Juneteenth mean to you? Um, well, I, I've talked about this in, in different ways. I think, for one, it's it's um, just, you know, I think the effect of slavery, even when they ended it, they said it's over, the news traveled slow. So certain people didn't even know that slavery had ended, you know what I mean? And nobody can pin down the exact date, but it was supposedly sometime between the 10th and the 20th, I guess, of a certain month. But um, so they, you know, they, it's ambiguous, I think, and that's a statement within of itself, you know, how whatever you could take from that, the fact that there's not an exact date with a signed signature that said this is the date that it happened mm -hmm. um, is interesting. And uh, I think it just speaks to the resilience of us in a field like this story is still continues our, the progress to where we're trying to say that we really have achieved a, a certain level of um, Equality, I guess, is, is social justice. Um, the, the the struggle continues, and we, uh, I think, we we come here to commemorate the fact that slavery ended, but we also come here to remind ourselves that the struggle continues. Yeah, I think that's well said. You know, and I think one thing that I really appreciate about Juneteenth being celebrated one in June, I think it's it's great that it's not in in uh, uh, February. I think it's great that it's actually celebrated in its own, know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> its own time. Um, and to it's, it's whatever month. It is June. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's June 19th, <laughs> right? I think, I mean, I think that's really powerful. And I also just love the eclectic mix of people who've come out here today. There's five different stages. Amazon is live streaming. You've got Project Bloat performing out here. You've got uh, Sir TDEs out here. Uh, now, you are part of the legendary High Rope. Every time I see... A smiley face. <laughs> I think about the iconic logo that you guys have created. <laughs> What's coming up on the horizon that's Hyro related? And what are you working on currently as well? Um, Hyro related? Um, I don't know exactly as far as like all of us, but uh, you know, we do show, we, we, we're doing the Shambhala Fest um, next month in, in uh, I think that's Whistler, British Columbia. And, um, I think we might be putting together a tour for Europe, which there's talk about it. But um, really, what I what what I have going on is I have a new album that is we're, we're finalizing everything. I don't have the exact release date, but it's, it's uh, titled Acres of Diamonds. Um, it's funny that we just happen to run. I have to run it to you because I'm trying to get my my final submission for the vinyl and everything right now. But um, yeah, so Pep Love Acres Acres of Diamonds that should be sometime in the fall. So yeah, keep your your eyes and ears peeled. That's a powerful name. I've got one more uh, last question for you. You know, if Billboard ran a story last week, and they were talking about how this is the first time in over 15 years that hip hop hasn't had a number one song or a number number one album in the first album of the year. This is also the 50th year of hip hop. What does it say about hip hop, or does it say anything about hip hop? If there's no number ones, when we're in a situation where we're not topping the charts. I didn't even know that. Yeah, I, I I didn't even know hip hop was topping the charts. I didn't know it was a hip hop song every year that was number one, or what every. It's the year ain't even over with yet. So what are they? They saying this is the the longest any within a year that is there. There's not been a number one uh, hip hop song in a Billboard. Correct. Album. Correct. Yeah. Song or album, like overall. Yes. Top two hundred. Top one hundred. I didn't know that. So do you know how long of a run it's been that we've had? Over fifteen years. Uh, over fifteen years in a row, there's been a number one pop charting hip hop song in the within the first quarter of the year. Correct. And the fact that there isn't now, I don't think it means much, honestly. You know, people still love people still love hip hop. I don't know if you can always. I don't think anything is supposed to stay the same, and I don't think hip hop was always meant to be the uh, the pop chart topping genre in the first place it's 
from the streets, really. So I don't think it means much, honestly. At least not to me. Word up. I like that I like that answer too. <laughs> you know. I mean, because there's there's a lot of discussion about changing sounds and styles all the time, but hip hop is always in an all inclusive genre. It exactly. brings in I think hip hop is personally stronger when it's pulling from other things as well. So uh to me this adds upside, this adds breath, this adds a brighter uh, light at the end of the tunnel than maybe than what some of the commentators are saying online. Pep love, we appreciate you, brother. Yeah, thanks, man. So I have it.